Hello, I'm so glad you're watching this video. In this video we'll complete bit logic operations which are Scan operand for positive or negative signal edge Scan RLO for positive or negative signal edge and set operand on positive or negative signal edge And finally we'll have an exercise These instructions are similar together and works based on signal changing Let me explain For these instructions, state of an address is not matter, either it is 0 or 1, but these instructions are used to query a 0 to 1 change in the signal state or 1 to 0. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming. HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Ok, now let's see first instruction. Scan operand for positive signal edge. This is its ladder symbol. As you see this instruction need to two addresses. Here. This instruction determine if there is a 0 to 1 change in the state of I0.0 .0 address. These instructions need a bit memory address to work. Here, M0.0 .0 is used. And this is its FBD symbol. So this instruction determine whether there is a 0 to 1 change in the signal state of a specified operand. Like this instruction, we have scan operand for negative signal edge. This work based on 1 to 0 changing in a signal state of a specified address. Let me to explain the negative one. This instruction is sensitive to 1 to 0 changing at I0.1 address. So when the value of this address is 0 or change to 1, or also is 1, the output of this instruction is 0. But when its state change from 1 to 0, This instruction generate a pulse at its output which makes set Q0.0 .0 to 1, and then will be 0. As you know, CPU runs its program, then updates its output and stores its input and again run its program. CPU continues the cycle until is stopped. So in this program, when a negative signal edge is detected in I0.1, this instruction set its output to 1 for 1 program cycle. In all other cases, its output has the state 0. So next pulse is generate here. Pay attention a set instruction is used in this program. So the Q0.0 .0 output remain 1 after first pulse. Alright. Let's write a program which turn on a motor when I0.0 .0 goes from off to on, and turn it off when I0.1 goes from on to off. We've written a program to turn on a motor before, but now we want the program works based on changing in push button states. Well this is my program with the SR flip flop. To turn on the output, I use this instruction which scan I0.0 .0 for negative signal edge. I0.0 .0 is connected to start push button. Now let's see how this line work. When this push button is its normal condition, I0.0 .0 is 0. If I press it, I0.0 .0 will change from to 1. Then if I release start push button, I0.0 .0 state change from 1 to 0. Now the used instruction generate a pulse just for one program cycle. This pulse make SR flip flop turn on its output. Second line works like first line. Here pay attention, this instruction work based on I0.0 .0 address, not the state of this virtual power, which is called RLO. 
Now, I want to explain an instruction which scan RLO for positive signal edge. This its ladder symbol. Unlike previous, this only need a memory address to work correctly. And this is its FBD symbol. Well, this instruction is used to query a 0 to 1 change in the signal state of the result of logic operation, RLO. Let me explain in this program. This instruction works based on changing at its input state. So when either I0.0 .0 or I0.1 is activated, the virtual power, in another word result of logic operation RLO, change from 0 to 1. Then, this instruction detects this changing at its input, and generate a pulse at its input which make the Q0.0 .0 will be on, only for one program cycle which is about 5 millisecond. And also there is an instruction which is used to query a 1 to 0 change in the signal state of RLO. Let's see last instruction in this video. Set operand on positive or negative signal edge. This like previous, but this instruction is used as an output. This instruction set a specified operand only for one program cycle, when there is a 0 to 1 change in the result of logic operation, RLO. See this simple program. When I 0.0, .0 change to close, the RLO change from 0 to 1, which this instruction can detect it. So, this instruction will change state of Q0.0 .0 from 0 to 1, only for one program cycle which is about 5 millisecond. And as a similar way, set operand on negative signal edge works when there is a 1 to 0 change in the RLO. Alright, now I'm going to have a short review of instructions which have been told in this video. In each line of this program, an instruction is used which is sensitive to positive edge signal. See the first line. This instruction is sensitive 0 to 1 changing in I0.0 .0 address, so when the value of this address change from 0 to 1, this instruction generate a pulse at its output. Usually a set instruction is used to latch the state. So by the first line Q0.0 .0 remain on. If I use a simple assignment, the Q0.0 .0 will be on for one program cycle which is about 5 millisecond. This instruction is used to query a 0 to 1 change in the signal state of the RLO at its input. So when I 0.1 change to close, after that, the RLO change from 0 to 1 at this input. So this block will generate a pulse, which will set Q0.1 to 1. In the last line, when I 0.2 change to close, this instruction set its output to 1, just for one program cycle. Pay attention, as you see, these instructions need a bit of memory to work correctly. So when an address of memory is used for this purpose, we mustn't use that memory in another where. Okay. Now let's do a simple project. I want to write a program which, turn on a motor, if a start push button or a limit switch goes from off to on, and turn off the motor if a stop or an emergency push button goes from on to off. This can be my PLC wiring. S1 and S3 are normally open push buttons which S3 is activated by a level sensor. S2 and S4 are used to stop output, which S4 is a normally close push button. Let me to do this project from first to have a short review. So double click on TIA icon. Here create a new project.
Now select your PLC type. Before start to write program, let me to say a point. As you know, each PLC input or output has an address. So if you select your CPU, in this window, in IO address you can change default addresses. Well let me come back to its default. I suggest you to use default addresses. Ok now let's write my program. So open OB1 block. Let me use FBD language to write my program. Well, first I use a SR flip flop to set and reset my output. We want to set output with two push buttons with OR logic. So I insert an OR block here. Let's see PLC wiring again. Start and level push buttons are connected to I0.0 .0 and I0.2 addresses. So I define them at OR block inputs. Pay attention here, the motor will be on base on positive edge at PLC inputs. So, I click here, and then add this instruction. As you know, here a bit memory address must be written. Pay attention you mustn't use this address again. Well, this must be sensitive to positive edge no negative, so I click here to replace this with its similar instruction. As you know, any byte have only 8 bits. From 0 to 7. So the last number in a binary address must be 7 or lower. For the second part, I need scan RLO for negative signal edge instruction. Well, in my PLC wiring, stop and emergency are connected to I0.1 and I0.3. If you remember, I can select an address here, drag and drop it in my program. Alright, this program is complete and can be tested. It's expected you can test a program with TIA simulator, and force table, otherwise, 
please see previous videos. Now, let me test the program on my PLC. As you see, PLC can turn on the output with a positive signal, at its first input. Also, when I change the next switch to turn off the output, it remains on, because of this instruction which detects negative pulses. So, I must inactive second input to turn off the output. In the next video, we'll see how we can use factory I.O. software, which can help us to test our programs. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.